So this video is best tips for software engineers in 2020. If you can write hello world, hello, hello you can change world. the world. So the first tip that I have for software engineers in 2020 is to form good habits and also find ways to keep you accountable for these habits. So for example, let's say you want a new job in 2020 and you know in the tech field, the way you get a new job most of the time is by having a technical interview and let's say you really want to focus on data structures and algorithms. You just saying, oh, in 2020, I want to be better at technical interviews. That's not really a goal, that's more of a dream. So we need to start turning our dreams into goals. So for example, let's say I want to be a better technical interviewee <laughs> in 2020. So the way I'm going to achieve this is I'm going to wake up early every day. And I'm going to wake up 30 minutes earlier than when I usually wake up. And I'm going to do a question from Leak Code. At the end of the week, all the questions I do not get to, I will make sure I have a solution for them. And I also know why that's the solution. You guys see what I'm saying? And you know something I think that's really great about these tips is that it applies to a whole bunch of different fields. So for example, one of the tips I had, but it's not going to make it in this video, but I'm just going to touch on it a little bit, is to have a mentor in every space you want to occupy. Like for example, I have someone I can go to for back-end questions versus front-end questions. One of my goals is to also grow this YouTube channel and I was listening to a podcast and there's this guy who filmed a daily vlog for 800 days in a row. And from this, he gained like a huge following, like millions. But for example, like if I want to grow my YouTube channel, I'm not going to ask some principal engineer who's maybe never even watched a YouTube video. So this second tip that I have for engineers in 2020 is to really challenge deadlines. At my job, we have something called sprints. So we have one week sprints and basically during this time period, you say what you think you can finish or accomplish. So let's say, for example, they want to add a feedback box to a web page. You know, what you can say is like, oh, I think that'll take one week or two weeks and it, it can become a part of the sprint or for multiple sprints, whatever. So I was in a situation and I actually talked about it in my Day in the Life Halloween edition video. I'll link it at the top. And during that time, I talked about how I was launching a new service. They wanted to launch this service quick. They had some really tight deadlines that they wanted to accomplish everything in. So we were in a room with like the engineering VP was there, there was a director there, product managers, my manager, and they were like, hey guys, so this is important, when do you think you can have it done? And in that moment, I had an idea of what the project was, I saw some designs of it, so I was like, okay, I think it can take X amount of time. However, I learned from this to never give someone an answer about a deadline on the spot. You should always go on your own, dissect the problem, you know, really research what's going on before you give someone a deadline. So, for example, let's say it could be something easy. Like, let's say you are trying to add a button to a page and you should think that will take maybe like a couple of minutes. But let's say you are adding this button to a different code base and the way they review that code base is they only review it once a week. And let's say the day that you think you can put it in, you miss it. So that means it will take an additional week for someone to review that simple code. Maybe it's a one-liner of adding the button. So that's where I say that it's good to really dissect a problem and think about when it can be done. So this third tip that I have is don't be afraid to take an unknown or maybe riskier project. And I think this is something I did well in 2019, that's why I want to continue it in 2020. But I was reading a book, and it's by Reshma, who's the CEO of Girls Who Code. And she says, guys tend to be more brave, while women tend to be more perfect. So for example, let's say you're in a group meeting, and there's this unknown project that is brought to the table. 
They're saying what the book stated was that guys are more willing to jump into that project while girls really just work on what they know. So for example, a girl might tend to be more specialized in a specific topic or subject because she likes to stick to what she knows because she's very good at that. So I don't know how true this is and I hope I'm not really messing up the analogies or how they said it in the book. But for me specifically, I don't care if it's front end or back end. If I'm interested in it, I'm interested in it and I'm going to go for it. And I hope you guys will do the same thing as well. Because you know, with risk, there's reward. And even let's say you fail or like you don't meet a deadline or maybe the project is way harder than what you expected. As long as you're learning, you're growing. Like, I think as long as you can learn from something, there's no way you can fail because you learn something. You know, now you know, okay, when it comes to that, I will never code like that again. Or, you know, maybe with a specific language, you learn some tricks or what not to do, whatever it may be. But I would say, don't be afraid to go for riskier or unknown areas. You know, if anything sounds interested to you, or maybe it's a very visible project, or it's just something you want, you know, go for it. And guys, let me know what you think about these tips so far. I feel like my first video was more put together. The, that's why those are the tips that made the top tips. I feel like these tips don't really hit as hard. I don't know. That's why they didn't make the video. But let me know what you think about them and let me know what has been your favorite tip so far. Or let me know if these tips you're like, oh girl, maybe you should not have made a part two. Next tip that we're bringing into 2020 is to be visible. And this is something I kind of struggle with. So what I mean by be visible is let your team know and people around you what you're working on. It kind of ties into like closed mouths, don't get fed type of situation. But I'll give examples because I think that that's how I can better explain it. Like for example, I had my manager come up to me and said, Oh my goodness, I did not know you were at work till like midnight working on something. Like why didn't you tell anyone? And I was like, what am I supposed to tell someone? And then she was like, well, someone else would have sent an email saying, hey, I was here till midnight. And that for me, that didn't really make sense. Or um, I was in a meeting the other day and I worked on this huge project and they were kind of like debriefing how the project went and different people on the team were saying like pros and cons then I had someone on my team who he got my back I'm so appreciative of him he was like Maya say something in the meeting say something in the meeting say something say something and I was like what do I I don't really have anything to say and he was like if you don't say something so I said something and a lot of people in the room agreed and it was good but I'm the type of person who I feel like if it's not like I don't like to just talk to talk even though I like I have this whole YouTube channel but honestly if I don't think something is valuable I'm not gonna say it like I'm not just gonna pull stuff out my butt you know <laughs> what I'm saying but it's very important to be visible because let me give you a situation let's say two people are working on a project let's say this person has actually worked more on the project but let's say they're silent while this person worked less, however, they're speaking up in every meeting, they're writing in group chats, they're talking to people on the team about it, you know, they're doing a lot of vocal, maybe extrovert type stuff regarding the project. It's going to look like this person, like to someone that's not in like the close group, like in the team, it's going to look like that person did more, even though this person who's just silent about it might have did more or done more. So yeah, this one is very difficult for me because I'm. it's called eye service. I don't know if that's like a Nigerian term or something, but like kind of, I, I really struggle with this because I kind of like, I like to let my actions speak louder than my words, but it's good to also let people know what you're doing because if you don't say something, people aren't going to know. The very last tip that I have for 2020 is something I live by all the time and it's fall in love with the problem not the solution 
as software engineers, the reason why it has like that engineering part, like we're not just programmers that are writing code, like we're really here to solve problems. And that's what being a software engineer is all about. So I think something I did really good in 2019 is that I will really ask and really try to understand what is the root problem that maybe you don't see at the surface. Sometimes I've been told this is the exact solution you should build. After I have dived into the problem some more, I realize that that's not what really customers care about. And I think that's something that we should definitely bring into 2020 is that we should always take a step back. Look at everything and kind of dissect what is actually the problem. Once we can do that, we can like come up with the best solution. And then a little sub tip is that it's okay to come up with more than one solution. We come up with a solution and you know our hearts in it just because we've been working on it for maybe two days. However, it's good to adapt. Like there might be a better solution out there and that's exactly what you should do and you should jump on that. If that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, y'all.